What happens when a fully autonomous vehicle is involved in an accident that results in a death? It's a question which has worried safety advocates for years, and it's a nightmare scenario which every engineer working on autonomous vehicle technology had hoped would never play out in the real world. Yet on Sunday evening in Tempe, Arizona, that nightmare became true when an Uber SUV operating in autonomous drive mode, traveling at around 40 miles per hour, hit and killed 49-year-old Elaine Hertzberg as she walked her bicycle across the street. According to police, the car was traveling five miles per hour faster than the posted limit, and there was an Uber employee behind the wheel supervising the car, which was operating in fully autonomous mode at the time. In keeping with editorial policy on this channel, I'm not going to show footage of the scene out of respect for Elaine and her family, and I'd also like to send them our deepest condolences and thoughts at this difficult time. And you'll notice the footage I'm using is generic autonomous vehicle footage today, not just Uber footage. At the same time, however, I think this terrible tragedy is a good opportunity to ask what happens next with regard to autonomous vehicle legislation and testing. Immediately following the accident, Uber suspended all of its autonomous vehicle test programs, including those in San Francisco, Pittsburgh, and Tempe. Naturally, a full investigation will be carried out with local police, Uber, and the National Traffic Safety Board, NTSB, and of course, an official cause of the accident will not be forthcoming until that investigation has been completed. However, based on what has been discussed by the local police, it appears that right now, local enforcement expects Uber to be exonerated of fault in the accident. Having reviewed camera footage from the car in question, the local police chief has confirmed that the deceased was not making use of a well-lit pedestrian crossing, but rather was crossing the road at a non-designated crossing point. Due to the lighting conditions there, they were not visible on the car's camera until just before impact, we're told leaving very little time for either the car or the Uber employee to react. Of course, this doesn't take away from the fact that someone died, and we should all remember that regardless of blame, the outcome of this tragic accident cannot be reversed. However, it, just like the fatal Tesla autopilot crash which claimed the life of Joshua Brown a few years ago, can teach us about what measures need to be taken in the future to improve the safety of autonomous vehicle technology. Which brings me to the focus of today's video. What now for autonomous vehicles? What can we learn from this terrible event? And what will it mean for autonomous vehicle development in the future? First, it's clear that while autonomous vehicle technology has come a long way in recent years, there are still edge case scenarios where autonomous vehicles simply can't work as expected, either because they lack the appropriate sensors to properly identify hazards, or they haven't yet experienced a situation similar enough to base a response on. In this particular case, it appears the sensors weren't enough for the car to see the pedestrian, making me wonder if night vision style infrared sensors would have prevented the crash, or perhaps the bicycle being wheeled across the street was enough to confuse the car's AI as to what exactly the hazard was. Either way, it's clear that those developing autonomous vehicle technology still need to work on sensor and or algorithm tech to ensure they capture and react to as much data as possible. Second, feeding off that first thought, is the sad fact that no system is completely foolproof. There will always be edge case scenarios which fall outside the bounds of software, and there will always be some sort of ghost in the machine, pieces of code which interact in weird ways, or sensors which unexpectedly fail. And we as a society need to ask ourselves if we'd rather humans, who easily get distracted, sick, or impaired in other ways, be the ones driving the car, or if we'd rather have a machine do the driving, which may, on occasion, malfunction. I'd pick the second, but it's only when it's undergone rigorous testing and only when we know that the hardware and software is capable of full level 5 autonomous driving. Like Waymo, I believe that anything with less than level 5 autonomy is dangerous because lesser levels rely on humans to supervise the car, and as it's been shown on several occasions, humans get distracted when they're not actively driving, which can lead to human-caused crashes. Finally, I think we're going to need a societal shift in the way we interact with the road. For example, only crossing at designated crossing places. Now, I know what you're going to say, we should already be doing that, and most of us are. 
And also motorcyclists, for example, if they've been trained well, are taught to expect the worst and ride defensively, ensuring that they're not in blind spots and are easily spotted. The same needs to be true of bicycles and pedestrians. If we're all to truly share the road, we need to work together to ensure that we're all safe. I'm not sure if this means wearing special reflectors or transmitters that help autonomous cars see us after dark, or if it just means that we follow the rules of the road. But to avoid this kind of tragedy happening again, we all need to ensure we're playing by the same rules and have the same expectations, don't you think? That's it. As always, don't forget to hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel and be sure to check out our new channel, Transport Evolve Take 2, where you'll see a little more behind the scenes stuff. And of course, if you'd like to help this channel keep going, please consider donating through Patreon or by making a Bitcoin donation using the link below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.